which is uncomfortable. Yes, if it's the little teeny nodule that we see of the real space thing, <clears throat> I don't think I can handle it because I really do have this claustrophobic thing. Like when you see them cramped into the tiny nose capsule, couldn't do that. I would just flip out. But if we could do it Jupiter 2 style, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Spacious space travel, it's the only way to go. Now don't go anywhere because there's a lot more to come on this edition of Uncut. Coming up, Mimi Rogers strikes a pose. There's just a lot of lines in her, you know, like, like her, her shoulders and, and um, she's just very sexy. Also ahead, Mimi Rogers starts over by playing her favorite role. This is one of the wonderful things about having a child is getting to experience all these things in life again. Hi, and welcome back to Mimi Rogers Uncut. I'm Suzanne Senna, coming to you from Luna Park Restaurant and Nightclub in Los Angeles, California. Hair, makeup, clothes, it's all part of the glamorous life here in Hollywood. And for Mimi Rogers, it's all part of the fun. <laughs> Working with top makeup artists like Bobby Brown are par for the chorus for Mimi. You know, it's fun to be a little creative when you're with actresses, but it, it always has to look beautiful. Well, I think also the point is that actresses don't tend to have the kind of faces that models have. We were talking about this earlier. Somebody like Christy Turlington, you know, you can put her in a fright wig and Halloween makeup and she still looks gorgeous. You know, if you did that to me, it'd be oh, shattering you lenses. Well, we all know that's not true. Mimi said she's always willing to take tips from the best. First of all, Bobby has the same philosophy I do about makeup, which is not a lot of it and just use it to sort of enhance what you have. I think that's another thing that uh, women can learn, which is to trust what works for you. Mm -hmm. Even be Just because something is the current fashion doesn't mean that it's going to look good on you. Right. And I learned a long time ago that I can only do it or go with it if it works, it works. for me. And if it doesn't work for me, then, you know, wait. There's no waiting for Mimi when it comes to fashion. She was part of a clothing line called Juicy. I get to come in and you know, look at what they're doing and say, you know, well, out of those colors, I think those three are totally fabulous, or maybe we could throw in that color, or that dress is great, can you do it with sleeves, and, you know, just little things, and some of the ideas, they kind of go like that, and some of the ideas they actually incorporate, and um, so it's not something like I can devote, obviously, a lot of time to, but, but being able to be a part of it, it has just sort of been a fun and creative outlet for me. Mimi believes film and fashion go hand in hand, which is why she had no problem going into the clothing business. There's a natural tie-in because, you know, people have always, you know, it's, it's, it's been a tradition, I think, the whole time that films have been in existence that certain fashion trends get created in film, uh, you know, particularly in the early years when, when costume design for filmmaking was such an incredible art. They don't do so much of that anymore, so really now, when films are being costumed, you look to designers like Donna Karen or Calvin Klein or now Juicy. You know, depending on the look that you're going for, you really, there has to be a tie-in between film and fashion because it's not an industry within an industry really anymore. Mimi also tries to learn a little from each project she does. Can you pull your hair away from that side? This side? Yeah. I try on each film to learn more about how the camera is used and, you know, how you create different moods and different atmospheres depending on the kind of lens you use and why, you know, you could shoot a close-up with this lens or you could shoot the same close-up with a different lens but achieve different background effects. You know, I, I think most film actors eventually want to either produce a film or direct a film or be more involved on some level. And I think the more you understand about how technically it works, in a way it can help your performance. Photographers love shooting Mimi. She's very angular, you know. Her, her, like her jaw and this, the line right here is really nice, so you want to get that. And she's got very full lips. That's a real nice quality, but you can't, you can't miss those. <laughs> um, her hair is great, you know, just, just a, there's just a lot of lines in her, you know, like, like her, her shoulders, and, and um, she's just very sexy. And Mimi loves them right back. I have a tremendous respect for them, and I think actually it'd be fun someday to study and, and really learn, 
you know, with a sure shot, you, you, you don't do anything other than point and shoot. But uh, I think it'd be fun to understand about um, light and experimenting with light. As for those stylists on location with her, I like to work with them, but I also have very sort of specific ideas of what looks right on me. So, you know, whether it's working with hair and makeup people or stylists, I'll say, listen, you know, you can do anything you want as long as it looks good. And if it looks good, I will. I'll try anything. But I know, you know, I know certain things that don't work. So if they want to, like, slick my hair back and put on liver red lipstick, I say, no, <laughs> we're not going to do that. Still ahead on Uncut, Mimi introduces us to the love of her life. Well, this is my daughter, Lucy, up here. Say hi. Welcome back to Uncut, where we're taking a close and personal look at Mimi Rogers. I'm Suzanne Summer. Now, Mimi has played a variety of roles throughout her career, but the most important one to her is the one she plays every day, Mom. The stuff that my three-year-old now talks to me about, which is kind of frightening, <laughs> she, looks, she holds up her dress and she goes, Can you stand it, Mom? No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she's like, Can you stand it? Oh. <laughs> or I'll walk downstairs and she goes, oh, Pretty shoes, Mom. I know, I'm in trouble. We got a major shopper developing here. <laughs> Get Mimi Rogers talking about her daughter, Lucy, and she's all smiles, and understandably so. I had her in the department store the other day. This is so funny. Robin's in or something. I'm trying to get her, you know, to keep going. And she stopped. Then she saw this little dress, and she went, Oh, my God, this is the dress I need. <laughs> oh and when he's coming out of a three-year-old, it's just so funny. Is she a little performer already? Oh, my God. Did you expect that? I took her um, Saturday night in, last Saturday night in Salt Lake City. Uh-huh. I took her to see the Nutcracker. Mm. They have a really good ballet company there, Ballet West. And she was just, like, over the moon about it. And, and it trans you, think you think when they're that young, you don't know if they're going to really... Oh, but she's totally obsessed with anything ballerina, dancing, princess, that whole deal. So about three-quarters of the way through the play, she took my face and said, I have to dance. So I took her off in the corner and she just danced and pirouetted oh, so and went crazy. Being a mom has made Mimi become more involved in children's charities. I'm happy to be here today and happy to be able to announce that Herpsville, USA is donating 34,000 books to Save the Children. The value of $270,000. The way that I got involved really today is that the Herpsville people told me that they were making this enormous donation to save the children. And because it's a charity that I feel strongly about and because I'm a parent and because literacy is a big issue for me, I wanted to come here and help them make the announcement about making the donation for Save the Children. So how has being a mother affected your career? Or has it? I don't really think it has affected my career. I get less sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I hear. No, I'm I get less sleep. Though. I mean, I have a few years before I have to really start worrying about the, oh, God, she's in school, and how do I deal with the traveling and the locations. Mimi brought her daughter to London while she was shooting Lost in Space. Mimi's on-screen kids, Jack Johnston and Lacey Chabert, fit right in with her off-screen family. I had my daughter there, and Jack and Lacey spent a lot of time with my daughter, and Lucy loved them, and, you know, Jack would come over and babysit, or Lucy would go to Lacey's apartment to play, and... Uh, you know, Lacey and I had a very girly kind of, I was kind of the bad mama. You know, I'd be the one that, you know, encouraging her to be naughty and tickling her on the set and making her crack up while we were filming. And, you know, we talked about nail polish and shopping and, you know, the important stuff. While the trappings of Hollywood glamour may be important stuff to some, Mimi Rogers is content with having her biggest fan living at home, her daughter, Lucy. This is one of the wonderful things about having a child. It's getting to experience all these things in life again for the first time. Because for us, it, you know, whether it's the ballet or popcorn or an icicle, you know, imagine seeing these things for the very first time. You didn't even know they existed. So um, watching her absolute sense of wonder, you know, it's, it's, it's just uh, it's a, it's a really wonderful, exciting thing to experience. Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have today for this edition of Uncut. We want to thank everyone here at the beautiful Luna Park Restaurant and Nightclub in Los Angeles, California, for having us here and for the hospitality. And as always, thank you for watching. I'm Suzanne Senna, and we live for this stuff.
if you're going to try to pursue a career as an actor, you have to be doing it because you just literally can't do anything else. You have to, you have to want it that badly because, yes, talent is important, but I think the rest of it is just an unflagging persistence. I mean, you're just dogged in your persistence and, and your ability to keep pushing no matter what the humiliation or anything else that comes along the way.